Pickle. The college football weekend is in the books on Friday, you may remember. Thursday, rather. Thursday. Thursday we asked some burning questions about the college football weekend. Sure did. Let's let's circle back to those. Let's just do, do you like that? Do you like getting emails that say circling back to this? No. No. Okay. Let's uh, follow up on our uh, on funny. our college football burning questions from week three. What was our first question? Our Ms. first Pickle. question was, who is the Lone Star Conference favorite now? And I think that was answered. Yeah. I mean, I think that at this point, you have to look at, at what Midwestern, Midwestern State, State has done and say, yeah. They are, they've got to be the favorite right now. They have beaten at least the top two favorites, mm-hmm. the teams that started the year number one and number two in the preseason poll yeah. uh, in back to back weeks. Now, look, uh, UT Permian Basin's hot, right? I think West Texas AM's not going anywhere. But if you want to talk about the perfect start to your conference season, oh, yeah. Midwestern State, I think, has to be at least in the catbird seat. Are they the best team? Maybe, yeah. uh, I think that uh, I think that what you saw from them last week. Now, part of it is that uh, the quarterback for Angelo State, uh, 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 Bronkhorst, Zach Bronkhorst, went mm-hmm. down in this game. But you know, Western State took advantage. And Sterling Sterling Cole was great. Uh, defense stood on its head. They're three and zero. They are two and zero in Lone Star Conference with two of the real big boys in their rearview mirror. Oh yeah, that's huge. So I think Midwestern State has to be your Lone Star Conference favorite at mm-hmm. this point. At this point, here on September twenty first, ask me in a week, and things may have changed. Right. But for now, their resume I think says it, all that it needs I think, to say. I think that the Lone Star Conference goes through Wichita Falls. What's next, Pickle? Up next, after a fifty-eight to nothing beating over Rice, the question was, "What's a reasonable expectation for Casey Thompson on Saturday?" And seemed to get it done. Uh, I would say uh, what we saw last week mm-hmm. was a reasonable expectation. He really only had one mistake he with that interception. He and didn't that was do it. he didn't do too much, right? Mm-hmm. I, that was one of the things that, that I wanted to see was I wanted to make sure that he didn't do too much, mm-hmm. and he didn't. He let the he let the offense uh, kind of cook. He let the offense go and, and, and do what they needed to, uh, do what they needed to do. I thought Casey Thompson was sharp. Um, he took care of his business and, uh, in the end he finished 15 of 18 for 164 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. You'll take that. You'll take that. A guy who looked like he was in command of the offense. He looked comfortable back there. Mm -hmm. That was something that we didn't see. Now, part of it is it was against rice, a team that they were going to overmatch. Right. But at the same time, we also thought they were going to overmatch Arkansas. Sure. (laughs) So So, uh, (laughs) I think that it's, I think that um, that was important. He looked accurate. He looked in command. And I think that he will be the guy who who is now going to be the, the starting quarterback going forward, at least for the foreseeable future. What's next, Pickle? Uh, well, the question was, what is step number one for improving oh, the North no. Texas defense? Let me oh, just recap this score oh, for you real no. fast. A 40-6 absolute butt whooping from UAB. Um, so throw it all away. <laughs> I mean, so we, we talked about, here's the thing we talked about, um, that step one was to get pressure. And here's the thing. Actually, they got two sacks on 17 dropbacks, mm-hmm. right? They got two sacks, 13. I believe that's about 13%. Yeah. Right. That's pretty good. Okay. But the problem was that was functionally it. That was they functionally did not do another it. thing. <laughs> they faced seventy six plays and they were not able to do they got they had four what we call havoc plays where mm-hmm. they were able to, 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 to mess up what they were doing. Four. Um just an astonishingly poor poor performance. The I, moment- here's the other thing though. Here's the, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. The other thing though. The offense didn't do him any favors. No, absolutely not. They were out on the field for a majority of the game. The offense got they they got hung out to dry in a lot of respects mm-hmm. with three turnovers um, that the defense was continually thrown back out there. Um, yeah, I just it was a, it was a, a horrible horrible performance all the way around. I think the defensive backs were just it was that was the worst part because the moment someone broke past the line of scrimmage it was just to the yes. house every time there was no tackling it was pretty bad pretty bad they gave up a, a ton of explosive plays especially through the, like that was the weird thing there were 17 dropbacks right two of them were sacks mm-hmm. very good four of them were explosive plays yes you can't give that up uh you can't live on that razor's edge like that mm-hmm. so uh, a, a very very poor performance from from them what's next pick? Speaking of another very poor performance for one Texas team here, Texas State versus Incarnate Word over under on 89.5 total points. Well, went under uh, 76. <laughs> yep. Um, 42 to 34. Yeah. Incarnate Word. 
no, won Incarn- that game. <laughs> and, and, and this was the thing. Incarnate Word, in many respects, did their part. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, their offense was... I mean, shout out to them. Don't take that away oh, from no. them. <laughs> well, actually, and I would say both offenses were really pretty good in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, Incarnate Word was exceptional on running the ball, exceptional passing the ball. They were they they had big explosive plays on both sides of it. The same can actually be said for for Texas State. I thought the offense was actually okay. Brady mm-hmm. McBride uh, basically, you know, two seventy eight, two touchdowns, no picks. But you, you know, can't let Incarnate Word put up. But the defense, the like defense <laughs> had no answers. The defense had no answers. I mean, they they were averaging, they averaged Incarnate Word averaged seven point two yards per play. That's Rough. staggering. Mm-hmm. I mean, FCS teams. Now, Incarnate Word, I mentioned on Twitter, Incarnate Word is better than you think. Right. Incarnate Word is a pretty good FCS team. But when you're an FBS team playing an FCS team, you cannot give up 7.2 yards per play. No, absolutely not. Yes. There's no excuse for it. Just very, very poor. Very poor. So, bad. 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 But. <laughs> What's next? Question? Let's shift to a positive note here. Uh, the question was, is Houston closer to week one, Cougs, or week two? And with a 45 to nothing shutout over Grambling State, I say that we got the week two Cougs. Yeah, that's not to say that I'm, like, overly pleased. Grambling no. was overmatched in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually thought, I thought, okay, let's start with the positives. Let's start with the positives. Defense, excellent. Mm-hmm. No notes. Really outstanding. They held them to an 11% success rate, okay? An 11% success rate on as far as plays are concerned, which means that, that it, it improved their expected points average on each uh, on a play. F- 11%, five out of their, how many snaps they have? 45 plays. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic, okay? The offense for Houston was quite bad. Part of it is that Clayton Toon went out, although mm-hmm. Clayton Toon was not good when he was in there. Uh, they bring in Ike Ug- 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 Ugbogu. Ugbogu. One more time. Ugbogu. <laughs> Ike Ugbogu. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really tough name. Um, and he was fine. He he looked like yeah. a backup quarterback, but against a, a bad team, a team that they overmatch. Uh, they ran the ball pretty well. Alton McCaskill ran the ball pretty well, mm-hmm. and and I think that overall that's where they really they really shined the best. That is an offense that is not going to beat good AAC teams if they play like that. Um, they're going to beat teams from the SWAC, right, in Grambling, but they're not going to be good. Um, they're not going to be good AAC teams. Overall, defense spectacular, awesome. You take mm-hmm. the week off, guys. <laughs> you guys yeah, look good. Well done. But but the the offense has got to figure things out, especially if Clayton Toon's going to be out. We don't know what his status is going to be going forward, but he went out in this game with an injury. Mm-hmm. So, all right, what's next, pickle? Up next, the question was: Is Tech going to be three and zero for the first time since twenty seventeen? Um, yes, fifty four to twenty one over FIU. Yeah, and and this thing started dicey, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh, no, no, don't no. Do I think it, it might have been like fourteen fourteen at one point. Um, that sounds that right? right. Yeah, it seems like it was like fourteen fourteen at one point, and I was like, oh god. But then Tech turned it on. Yeah, Tech woke up, especially offensively. And especially, finally, we saw like what we had signed up for from Tyler Shuck. We we saw what we signed up for: twenty-eight to thirty-five, three ninety-nine, four touchdowns. Mm-hmm. That's what it should have been against Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, and it was against theoretically an FBS team, theoretically a better team in right. FIU. Um, that's what we signed up for, which is great. But they've mm-hmm. got to learn to start playing in the first quarter, or else those sure. Big Twelve games aren't going to end yeah, they up st- that way. I mean, they started super slow, <laughs> yeah. but once they woke up, the offense it's got into gear, and that was the first time we really saw it. No, that's not true. They got into gear in the second half against Houston. Yeah. So, but they did not get into gear at all against Stephen F. Austin. Mm-mm. But once after basically that first quarter, they really took off and they were great. Um, and look, the defense I thought played pretty well. Once they once they kind of woke up and they were they figured out, oh wait, we're just a lot better than them. Um, it's like I, everyone I, took a deep breath. Yeah, I thought that, you know, I think that their rush defense is still a bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little worried about their their running defense. But overall, I thought that it was pretty solid. Yep. And and I think that for, for Tech, 3-0 and is 3-0. and You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Mm-mm. And now they go to, uh, it's in Austin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they go to Austin on, on Saturday morning. So 3-0 and is 3-0, and and you don't, you don't uh, complain about that. What's next, Pickle? Up next, let's talk some CUSA ball. What was the most important unit to UTSA starting CUSA play 1-0? Oh, well, they did.
did, they beat Middle Tennessee 27-13. to Yes, and this is one of those games that it was not as close as the rec- as the score indicates. This game no, was, that was garbage this game was This game was over halfway through the game. I mean, uh, three quarters of the way through the game, right? This game was, was over. Now, look. Again, kind of like what we're talking about with Houston. Mm-hmm. Defense? No notes. Spectacular. Really good. They held down a t- an offense that is basically entirely reliant on throwing the ball, and they just smothered them. Yep. They, I think Bailey Hockman, the quarterback for Middle Tennessee, quit the team. Like, on on Sunday. He quit the team. He made them quit. Like, UTSA's defense was excellent. Mm-hmm. They were really, really good. They were not allowing anything in the passing game. That was very good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And by the way, the the, the rush the rush defense was very good as well. I believe they only gave up, boy, fifty yards of rushing. They look really good. good. Right they now. look great. They look real good. Okay, so the offense was it's okay. Part of it, it no, wasn't part, as part of it was Frank Harris threw a couple picks. Yeah, part of it was Frank Harris threw a couple picks. They were basically those two picks away from like really running away from them. But that was a bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. Since here McCormick goes for 100 yards, but ho-hum. You know what I mean? We're kind of used to that. Um, but, you know, Frank, they, they came up with the big plays when they needed them. Um, they also had a pick six, I believe, in this game. And that was one of the biggest games, one of the biggest plays of the game. Um, and, yeah, I, look, they're 3-0. and They've got a huge game this week against Memphis. Mm-hmm. Maybe, if you squint, maybe the toughest game left on their schedule. Um, but... I think that the most important thing for them in this game was their defense because the offense was fine. It was okay. They're going to need to turn it on this week against Memphis. What's next, Pickle? Up next, and probably the most exciting game of the weekend, how worried Not probably. it was. <laughs> how worried are you about SMU's pass defense? And if you missed it, the Hail Mary won it for the Mustangs 39-37 to over La Tech. Yeah, they were dead, and then they were not. <laughs> uh, and then they and then they won. Like basically, is kind of what happened. Like we, all within like yes. a split second on the final play. <laughs> uh, so the question at, at hand was, how worried are you about the pass defense? Mm-hmm. Uh, still worried. Yep, didn't look too. Still hot. worried. Austin Kendall goes twenty four thirty eight for three fifty one and four touchdowns and a pick. Um, yeah, still worried. Um, their offense was able to kind of overcome the defense, the pass defense's mm-hmm. troubles. That's going to probably be a theme going forward. I, I, and that's I just, not good in I, re- I remain concerned about this pass defense. Um, and and furthermore, you know, they were not really able to – they didn't get – they um, they got one sack in this game, right? Mm-hmm. One sack. They had a couple splash plays, right? They, they, uh, they had one sack. They had three pass deflections. They had an interception. But that is just – that's just not going to do it. No. They've got to, they've got to find a way to – Come up with be a little bit more, you know, get off the field on third down. Come mm-hmm. up with big plays and stuff to get. And them you off. just can't wait for your offense to be right. able to throw a hail mary every game. You've right. got to start doing something for them because the yeah. offense looked good. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, look, wins are wins. You don't apologize for wins. No. Big game this week in the Iron Skill against TCU. What's next, pickle? Up next, Baylor did what they needed to do against Kansas, forty-five to seven. The question earlier last week was Baylor's offense over under on four forty-nine point five total yards, and they came up with five eighty-five. So they did. How about that? They looked. They they woke up in the second half. Now they they were, in my opinion, never in peril of losing this game. No, because which was good. <laughs> because Kansas's offense is but extra but extra but. Very, very bad. And give credit to the to the Baylor defense. They came up with big plays. But the offense was stuck in the mud in the first half. They woke up in the second half. They were able to really get the ball running. Um, you know, they were able to run the ball really well with Abram Smith, with Tristan Ebner, um, spread the ball around a little bit. Tay McWilliams got a touchdown run in this game. Mm-hmm. Gary Bohannon was fine. I thought he was adequate in this game. I don't, I don't think they, they needed him to go out there and be spectacular, but no. I think that he was pretty darn good. But the defense led the way. So they, they hit the over. Uh, there's your there's your Big 12 gimme. There's mm-hmm. your Big 12 layup. And good job for taking good it. Good job. D- don't screw around with it. We've certainly seen teams that have <laughs> screwed with gimmies, right? Yep. Uh, they did not miss the layup. Now they need to go and, and hit a couple of tough shots. So uh, good win for Baylor. They're 3-0. What's next, Pickle? Finally, another team that went out there and took care of business was A&M with their 34 to nothing shutout over New Mexico. The question last week was what should we be looking out for for the Texas A&M offense on Saturday? Yeah, and what we wanted to see was what the offense, what kind of adjustments they made to the scheme 
to, now yeah, that, to fit their personnel. Yes, now that um, the Haynes King is out and now that Zach Calzada is in. Um, they pushed the ball down the field a little bit more, which I was happy to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were not doing that with, with Haynes King. I don't know if they were waiting to open up the playbook and he just got hurt before they could really do that. Um, but they were certainly pushing the ball down the field a little bit more. Uh, in fact, on passing, uh, they averaged 7.6 yards per pass, which was pretty good. Now, part of it was they had a long touchdown pass to uh, DeMond Demas, uh, who I believe scored his first, I think that might have been his first career catch. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that the offense was good against New Mexico. They're a lot better than New Mexico. New Mexico's yeah. pretty bad. Um I still have my concerns about the offense, and they're going mm-hmm. to linger into this week with a big showdown at AT and T Stadium against Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did show signs. I did see signs of flexibility. I did show see signs of, of versatility and ability to change the offense a little bit to fit Zach Calzada's scheme. Um, well, and it's like we said last week. This was the perfect thing for the Aggies, honestly, mm-hmm. to be able to go out there and get some playing like some actual game time snaps but mm-hmm. also know that we're still this gives us an opportunity to figure stuff out basically. defense looks great defense looks fantastic awesome stuff there but uh offense i, I I'm, I'm very interested to see what they do against a team that that for the first time this year i think actually matches up against them yeah so a team in their way class. in a in a game that's always just nuts yeah. so <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so defensively a&m fantastic offensively Good. I'm not quite ready to declare Unsure. that their problems are solved. Uh, let's see them do it against a really good team. like uh, Not a really good team, but a, at least a, a very solid team in Arkansas. Yes. So, there you go. And that is our college football recap. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.